Hi everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with an old favorite, my hand crank Singer knitting machine. But is it really a favorite? The reviews on Amazon aren't that good. And to be honest, it's a pain to have to hold this handle and keep it at a random upright angle while I wind the yarn. But at about 20 to $30, depending on how the price is on Amazon that week, it's a really good deal for making your own two-stranded knit blanks or worsted blanks for dyeing asymmetric gradients. Today, I am happy to unbox my new updated Singer knitting machine. And I am really excited for this version because it looks like they upgraded the way that the model works so it now has feet, which means I can rest it on a table with vertical pressure from one hand as I crank versus, you know, holding it at this weird angle and trying to, to deal with it. So let's open up the box and see what we've got. I bought this back in December and I cannot believe that I waited so long to finally open it up. Let's see. That was a little easier than I expected, but let's... Oh, okay, and already the feet are falling out of the package. But I do have four... Well, maybe. <laughs> All right. I've got... <gasps> I've got four feet for the knitting machine. Oh, cool. Already it looks like that there might be some kind of improvement with the way that you feed the yarn through, but I guess before I mess with things too much, I should probably see the instructions. Annoyingly, I have to go get a screwdriver because for some reason they felt it necessary to use screws to screw this knitting machine to the box. This is not the first time my little penguin screwdriver has made an appearance on the channel. Although I feel like it used to have a beak, but that clearly got lost somewhere. I am glad to have something to help me unscrew. Oh my goodness! Whatever happened to just like you know, using those annoying things that you had to cut to attach things here. And okay, I better save these screws because I don't know if these are important for the knitting machine or not. I mean, these can't be needed for something later, right? But. We've got these little screws. I suppose my original knitting machine did something similar, but you can see I didn't bother to unscrew these feet. I was like, what on earth is going on here? And just kind of cut around the cardboard. Can't have patience for that. All right, here is our knitting machine. And we've got, I can see the toggle for doing straight knitting or in the round. That looks nice and clear. And that is softer already. The original one made this really loud click sound. And so that made it hard to do while watching a movie with someone. But this, you know, is like a low hum, but not super annoying. Okay, and here's the underside. It does not look like those screws are going to be important. See the holes where they came from? I wonder why they would bother with that. It's the last thing that they did use one of those uh, annoying zip ties to tie down that's in here is the yarn that came with the sewing machine. And I wonder what it would say about it, but 
It's actually reasonably soft. I'm assuming that it is, it says it includes two skeins of yarn, but, huh, I'm, a, I'm assuming that they're acrylic, but I will have to, as I'm trying to get the instruction booklet out of the box, aha! Hey, we've got some other nifty tools in here attached to our uh, instruction manual, which I just tore. Trace out this pattern for woolen ball. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, this is a pom-pom pattern. Fine. I'm okay. I'm fine that I ripped that. This one comes with a crochet hook and a yarn needle. So two things that are really helpful for working with the kit. I don't remember if the last one came with those or not. Instructions come in, a, in multiple different languages. So, all right, let's see what we need to do. Please keep this machine out of reach of very young children. Uh-oh. Da, da, da. <laughs> we'll see what my kids do with this. All right, I've snapped the pegs in the four feet holes at the base of the knitting cylinder. All right. Well, that's not snapped. Oh, there we go. Hopefully these only go in in one direction. But I'm liking this already. I feel like this is a bit more delicate. So I don't know if these legs snap back off, so it would be kind of a pain to store. But yeah, I feel like this, this isn't bad at all. I mean, it still could use, it doesn't have a great spot for the hand, for holding on, but I guess I could hold on to the side. Oh, that's not bad at all, because being able to put pressure on the stool is rather nice. Actually, you could even hold on to the leg. That's kind of like a handle. Oh, that's really not bad. You know, doing that compared to, to, to this, where you... I mean, even holding on to the top, it's just awkward because you can't, you can't twist it unless you hold on to it in some kind of way because that moves the, the old knitting machine. Whereas this one, you can actually do this one-handed without having your other hand on there. I mean, it moves around a bit, but it's more balanced. So now I'm going to need to figure out how the new tension adjuster works because this is a bit different from the old kind. All right, I still don't know what this tiny little hook portion in here is for, but this is how it looks like we're supposed to start. We will start by threading the first hook and skipping the second. And so threading every other hook like so just like we would with the other knitting machine. And so this will allow us to start it in a way that it won't immediately unravel from the bottom. Okay. And now that we've skipped the last one and we'd be ready to start again, we put the yarn through this thread chamber. Is that what they call it? the thread inlet and you see how I kind of put the bottom down through this hole at the bottom and then I'm gonna close it up so it's basically in this chamber and can't come up I see there's this little hole here I'm not sure what that's supposed to be for but I think now uh, if we tighten it a bit we can start knitting Hopefully the tension from my Swift is not too great. You can see we're sticking, oh there we go, sticking a little bit, maybe having some, I guess if you need a looser tension you can come back out, oh no I guess it slips back into that little hole. See I don't really care if it's too loose because I don't really care if it's too loose because 
I will just die with this eventually. But this seems to be going pretty smoothly. I mean, I'm not winding, unwinding from the Swift, from my yarn Swift directly. Um, I am, yeah, the, the Swift itself gives a little too much tension. So I kind of need to pre-unwind it from the Swift. But that's looking really, really nice, don't you think? All right, I am going to settle down and keep winding a bit. And we'll see if any troubleshooting comes up. So I'm further along now. And it's still pretty awkward to handle. I mean, holding on to one of these bases isn't really that easy because you can see that it shifts. And so I'm wishing that it had some kind of handle um, because, you know, there's not really enough space up here to put my hand, my hand on. I'm finding that um, I can get a little less tension if I go through the top hook. But sometimes where it's catching, I think it's because the tension with the stitches is just a bit too tight in some of these areas. But ultimately, taking it off a stool and holding it in between my legs is actually a much nicer way for this to go. And this is something that was not really possible with, for me to do with the older model. But this is a lot more comfortable way to do it. And you can see that our blank, with all of its uneven stitches, because of my tension variations, but it's coming out the bottom. But at least now I have it with the yarn coming out the top of the thread inlet. Um, that gives it less tension, so I can unwind directly from the Swift, like so. So for comparison's sake, with my older model, there wasn't really, you know, I guess I could, because of its shape, and because it didn't have like the legs to help grip it, it was harder to hold in between my legs just because of the where the handle was and I don't know I guess this is in a position and maybe because of where the the intake was this is in a position that I really tried well now that I think about it that might have been easier as well so I think that if you don't mind trying to go a bit slowly um, and maybe have a tabletop below where you are yeah it's still not amazing but I feel like I've <laughs> now I'm having some issues restarting it. There we go. I feel like I've hit a nice rhythm here. And that I could do this for a while to make my own custom blank. And it's funny, I have I will want to try this with something that is heavier than worsted weight yarn. I think that the yarn yeah, the yarn that came with the machine looks like it's worsted weight. I'm curious if this could handle a bulky weight yarn or... What? What's going on with that loop? Oh, I I'm curious if it could handle a bulky weight yarn. And I'd also like to wind from a center pull ball to make my own two-stranded stuff length. But I have no idea how much of a pain it would be to unravel a homemade soft one. But these are all things that we will need to see. So, is this new knitting machine better than the old one? I think the sound is a bit less annoying. Uh, but who knows? I am glad that I decided to try to get a replacement, but yeah, I mean, this is still loud, but I think slightly less annoying for movie watching. All right, I'll come
come back when our blank is done or if we end up with some slip stitches or something and I need to troubleshoot it. But otherwise, let's finish up making this worsted weight pre-knit blank. All right, we have had a bit of an oopsie where I uh, wound backwards at one point. And so when I was doing the round, I realized that I had dropped some stitches. So now with this crochet hook, I am going to try, attempt to pick these stitches up and put them over over the hooky. And so there'll be some long bits where the stitches were dropped and I'm not going to worry about that too, too much uh, because it should all even out in the end. Now, I mean, this could make a mistake or become a bigger oops, mistake depending on how you are going to be dyeing this, but let's see if we have this all resolved. See if there's any other stitch. Yeah, I think I've got all the stitches picked up again. So as long as I am unraveling from the right position, it should be fine. And now I can carry on with my knitting. Just if you accidentally go backwards, make sure you pay attention and fix it. <laughs> okay, we're ending the end of our yarn. So now I'm going to just let the rest of the yarn feed through our knitting machine and keep going. And we should, <laughs> there we go, come off. Might have a few little snags funny. There we go. There we go. Eek. Okay. And ha. Huh. Okay. So now we have this mess at the end and I am going to just go ahead and unravel a portion. This is a bit longer than I normally would do, but uh, since I messed up the end edge, it's what makes sense. And this is something that I want to unravel eventually. So therefore, I'm not going to try to do a proper bind off, but instead, paying attention to the last stitch, I am just going to go around and insert the needle into each of the stitches to just keep them from unwinding further. For some reason, the Knit Picks commercial blanks stayed wound um, pretty nicely. Oh, that dropped one. Doesn't matter if I drop a stitch, just trying to keep it from unraveling completely. And so then when I finish, when I finish my dyeing, I can just slip this out and then start unraveling. But you could do a proper bind off as well. Alright, so then pull the needle through and even leaving that loose, this will prevent it from unraveling and then we can dye our sock blank or worsted blank in this case. So if you're getting this knitting machine because you want to knit a scarf, maybe you should look elsewhere. But if you want to make just a blank that you can use for spinning, maybe you want to make some self-striping yarn, or you want to wind two strands of yarn together to make some identical sock yarn, 
it works great for that. Even with the mistakes that happen within this blank, since we're planning on unraveling it, it doesn't really matter. I am really happy with my updated knitting machine. It's not leaps and bounds better than the original one I owned, but I think I prefer this one mainly because it makes less noise and it's a little more comfortable to hold. Thank you so much for watching this unboxing of my new Singer machine. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and that maybe you can go start making your own blanks to do some yarn dyeing. Thanks so much for watching.